showcase that, you'll hear her voice in the Hawk community. Hey, her voice in the Hawk community. Naomi Grossman here, best known cover for American Horror Story, thanking you for showcasing women's voices in horror. Here at Midsummer Scream, if you haven't already, come see me. I'll be signing autographs, taking selfies. We'd love for you to come play with Pepper. Mwah. Hi, I'm Eileen Dietz, and you probably know me best from The Exorcist, where I play Basuzu, <laughs> also known as Captain Howdy. <laughs> Christina, I run local haunts. Event producer. Vanessa Cordova, business owner. Jessica Shepherd, scare actress. Lizette, project manager. Hi, my name is Irene Korea, owner of Luna Sweets and Treats. I'm Melanie, and I'm the hooker behind Malika Creative. <laughs> I'm Lizette, and I'm a stunt performer. Crystal Noir, spooky vintage shop owner and macabre model. My name is Ashley, I'm a scare actress, and my hot name is Cherry. Hello, my name is Kayla Nicole, and I'm a cosplayer, a scare actress, and a slider. Hey, what's up? My name is Moo, and I'm a makeup artist. Hi, I'm Sandria of Sandria's Crafts, and I'm a vendor. Hi, I'm Lauren, and I'm the founder of The Pumpkin Shop. Hello, I am Danny Masamoto. I am the owner of Danny's Spooky Treats. I specialize in authentic Japanese chamoy. Hi, I'm Rayleigh, and I'm the small business owner of Grim Girl. My name is Ale, and I own a Halloween retro store called Luna Club. <laughs> I have been scare acting for about nine years, and I am also a burlesque performer. Hey, ghouls. My name is Crystal Perez, and made by Cristalinda is my small business. Rio, business owner, Night of the Living Pets. What's up? I'm Darla, and I'm a chainsaw performer at Universal Studios Hollywood. I'm Amanda Yost, and I'm an entertainment supervisor at Halloween Horror Nights. Hi there, my name is Jessie, and I am a cosplayer and hot actress. Hey, I'm Allison Fox. I am the owner and co-founder of 8820 Group. Hi, my name is Raven, and I am a scare actress at Not Scary Farm. How awesome is that? You'll see the video coming soon after this panel. Yeah. Yeah. There was the a video full, to that. The full videos. There's a lot of us. <laughs> All right, you ready to hear from the panelists? All right, well, my name is Star, and I'm so happy to be here as the moderator, a fire performer, a scare actress, and most recently, the performance, newest performance manager at LA's Haunted Hayride. It's hard to 
can't believe that I've been a part of this Hong community for almost eight years, especially because of the way I was introduced to it. It all started mid-September 2015, where my sister Diamond comes home one night and tells me she signed me up, me up for an interview at Universal. Now this chick said interview at Universal. <laughs> I had no idea that I was about to audition to be a scare actor at Universal Studios Horror Nights. Now this might seem funny, but I was the biggest scaredy cat growing up, so I was genuinely terrified to be a part of this. Now I'm not a quitter, so I was like, I'm not backing down from this at all. I went, auditioned, had a great time, got through, and they put us in the pool performers. And now what that is, it's a group of people who are chosen to be performers, who fill in, who are on deck for people who aren't available that night. So this was a huge blessing for me, almost in disguise, because I got to try every position in the park. So I got to choose what I really liked or what I really fell in love with. Now, I've played some memorable characters. Um, including the Black Bride in 2015's Insidious Maze. Wow. I've been Kiss Me from The Purge. Oh. Personal fave. Um, I've also been the original doll character in the Hell's Harvest Scare Zone, Hatchimana. Wow. Yeah. Now, I've met some truly eclectic people, uh, eclectic souls at Universal Studios. Um, <coughs> a few of which were fire performers. They were so nice to teach me tricks every now and then, and I took it up more when COVID hit, um, but I was always kind of hesitant to perform in front of people because I lacked that confidence. But that all changed when I got the call to spin fire at Shacktoberfest 2022. <laughs> That was the event that changed it all for me. I, it was a complete turning point in terms of my confidence and I felt like I truly became the fire performer I am at this event. Um, now, continuing on, now as the performance manager at Hayride, I can still create memorable experiences for our guests, only in different ways, and push boundaries for myself and truly kind of step into who I am as this professional now was director, fire performer, and now manager. Thank you guys so much for listening to my story. Now we're gonna move on to our first panelist. She is a writer and a filmmaker. Over the years, she's been um, capturing and documenting the progress of haunts and their builds throughout the years, posting them and all the all to all of her followers. And this is Mary Imagination. Thank you, Star, for that wonderful introduction. You are amazing. Hi, guys. Okay, so where I got my start in the Hong community? Well, it all began in 2010. My very first visit to the Universal Studios Halloween Horror Night. What fear fears most? Oh my goodness, I fell in love with this event. A world where I could be immersed in nightmares and monsters. I knew from that very first visit, I wanted to be involved in haunted attractions. Well, at this time, I was 14 years old. I didn't know there was a whole fan base for Halloween Horror Nights. And then I discovered the HHN Updaters, HHN Fanboy. The Saw Twins, HHN Sisters, Adam Atrophy, and so much more. And I discovered that the Saw Twins, oh my goodness, they were hosting monthly get-togethers at Universal Studios. And uh, I was uh, nervous and anxious and shy, and I'm like, oh my goodness. So one day I gathered my guts, and I introduced myself at one of these gatherings. I said, hi, I'm Mary. And that was one of the best decisions I've ever made. I'm friends with so many of these people to this very day, and they are the ones who introduced me to other haunted attractions, like the Queen Mary Stock Tower, Mary Farm, and the haunt that would later become my home, Sinister Point Haunted Attraction, based in Drea, California. And it was here beginning in 2012 at 16 years old. I began scaring. I would work their events, Christmas fears. I worked the build team. And I'm so grateful to Jeff Scheifelbein, Paul 
Linder Smith, Danny K. Moy, and the entire Sinister Point team for teaching me everything that there is to know about haunting. Woo! And my goodness, and those skills that I learned there, they carried over into a, a world on your television. I was on the very first TV show for Blumhouse called Elevator. On this TV show, I, I got to scare people and I met an incredible cast and crew, but this was not my first rodeo in TV and film. Back when I was a teenager, I started my own production company called Imagination Productions. And here, I got to bring my scary stories to life through the art of filmmaking with an array of amazing, talented people and peers within the haunt community. And it was just so wonderful bringing people together to bring these scary stories to life. Woo! And honestly, storytelling has always been the heart and soul of me and at my very core. And as, as a teenager, I started inspired by the HHN Updaters. I started this YouTube channel called The Fright Zone. I would go to different community events, like the Spook Show. I would go to different conventions, haunts, and like, you know what? Share stories about the different creators, the different haunters, small businesses. Support all these amazing people of our community yeah. and record haunts. And you know what? I'm capturing the memories of our community and sharing it onto YouTube. And I get to do this to this very day via Knott's Network. <laughs> an honor to be able to do this. I absolutely love this community so much and I'm so grateful to have found family through this community. I, you know, it's just amazing and no matter what the ups and the low lows and the trials and tribulations, it's all been worth it in the end and to this very day. You know what you guys? My heart is a haunted attraction and I'm grateful that you are all the ones to haunt it. <laughs> hearing about that. Our next panelist is actually on two haunts this weekend at Midsummer. She has been working behind the scenes for years, all the while scaring in the trenches. You know what they say, the best leaders lead by example. Oh, Miss Pasta. Uh, hi everyone. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Pasta. I have been a haunted professional for the last closer to 20 years now. Um, I've been a fan of all things spooky. I've been, oh my gosh. Uh, I've worked at Not Scary Farm, for those of you who don't know, for those of you who do, I see a lot of you here, and I'm super excited. So thank you for all of my fellow talent who I'm looking at. And thank you guys. Yeah, no, so uh, I started originally as a fan, is really what ultimately it came down to. So. I like spooky things. I like to be spooky. I like to be a spooky lady. So I started as a fan, first and foremost. Um, besides all that, I have worked at a lot of different attractions, like whether you see me at an escape room or things like that. Um, and what it comes down to is honestly, let's make stuff cool. <laughs> like, really? That's what I, my slide shows not there, so I can't. But, uh, <laughs> I I had points. But, um, Yes, uh, honestly, like, I'm just excited that we're all here, and really what it comes down to is I started as a, I started as one of you, I started as somebody who was in, in a makeup or a mask, and here we are. And that's really what it comes down to, is let's move forward. And as a person, and as a, as a female, we got this. <laughs> Pasta's been in the industry for around 20 years. Our next panelist is someone that has skyrocketed in a short amount of time. This is Lucy with Deadly Sweet. First of all, this is so crazy. Like, there's so many people. Thank you for being here and hearing our story. Trickster for putting this together. Like, you did amazing. 
but uh, my name is Lucy, and I own Deadly Sweet with my fiance Chels. And the way Deadly Sweet came to be is so crazy and random. Like I don't think it, it wasn't supposed to happen, but it did, and it's like so amazing. But um, before Deadly Sweet, or if you guys don't know what Deadly Sweet is, it's uh, we make spooky themed desserts, like our coffin brownies with different fillings. Um, <laughs> our churro cookies, crunch bars, s'mores, like a bunch of spooky themed desserts. And we have a booth here at Midsummer Scream if you guys want to go check it out. That's where Chelsea's at. But, uh, <laughs> so, thank you guys. so before Deadly Sweet, I was actually in real estate and Chelsea was selling solar. She door knocked door to door. So we were both self-employed, and when you're self-employed, you're never guaranteed a check. So it was always, I had money, she had money. Well, in the beginning of 2020, things were slowing down, and we both had no money. <laughs> so we were like, what the hell are we going to do? We needed to find a way to pay rent. So Chelsea had an idea, and she said, well, it's February. Valentine's Day is in 14 days. Why don't we do chocolate-covered strawberry boxes? And I said, what? Uh, we're going to make $2,000 with chocolate covered strawberry boxes. And she said that she used to do it all the time for friends and family. She sold it a few times, just little boxes with like 15 berries, like 20 bucks. And I said, okay, well, make me some and let me try them. She made them for me and I died. I was like, these are the best berries I've ever had. So I didn't know this about myself, that I'm a little entrepreneur, like... I, I got fired almost every single job that I've had, so I knew that I had to work for myself, because that didn't work. So I was like, okay, let's make an Instagram, let's make a name, let's make a logo, like let's uh, make a flyer. And I just went crazy thinking of so many ideas that we could sell this for Valentine's Day. So we did it, and Valentine's Day comes, we sold like 120 boxes, 25 bucks, Chelsea did not sleep, we <laughs> dipped it all night, and at the end of it, I was like, this is the hardest I've ever worked, but this was the most fun I ever had. And I said, this is worth way more doing than anything I've ever done. So I told her, let's go full time. I'm, I'm all in or all out, so I said, let's go full time. Worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work, and I go back to selling houses, and under a manager and all that stuff. And she's like, uh, took some hesitation. And then Mother's Day came and we did it again. And then it was crazy. And she's like, okay, let's do it. And ever since then, we've completely have changed. Um, we went from Chelsea's Chocolate Shop, that was the first name, to like this brown logo. And then we, it was first our Bitmojis, a brown logo. We were just constantly trying to change. We did that for a year. And we slowly realized that doing cute collections and cute boxes wasn't us, and we wanted to rebrand. And we said, if we rebrand, what is it gonna be? Well, if you know Chelsea and her family that's here in the crowd, thank you for being here. <laughs> they are the biggest horror fans ever. Like, I know everyone here is too, but I was a big scaredy cat, so when I met Chelsea, I was like, I don't wanna see a scary movie. They took me to Horror Nights. Oh my God, this is so scary. I would like literally cover my eyes. And now it's like the, I love it so much. They introduce it to me. Well, her family, they do a haunt every single year. Um, they've been doing it at their school and they did it on their lawn. And the whole family is like, they scare too. And so I naturally like got into the scene and I loved it. So we said, well, why don't we turn our business into a spooky business? Like what? Okay, cool. So <laughs> I was like, I was like, what if we change this to all spooky? And you don't see that in where we're from in Ventura County. So we were like, yeah, let's do it. It would be so cool. What would be the name? We changed it to, we decided Deadly Sweet. That's going to be the name. And the first, the first um, pop-up that we went to was Halloween Depot. And they accepted us there. And when we went, we fell in love with doing the pop-ups and it just skyrocketed from there. I was like, I wanna do every Halloween show. And treats are just so much cuter when there's icing blood on it. Like, it's the cutest thing. It's so cute. So now we have 
our minds are just going so crazy on the possibilities. Like the com haunt community and the horror community is so cool. Like we love it, it's our life. And um, you know, what I hope to inspire you guys here from telling my story is to pursue your dreams, pursue your passions because when it gets hard, you always figure it out. And I know this is kind of cheesy, but when you do something that you love every single day, you, oh, fuck, I fucked it up. Yes! <laughs> this is what I came to hear. I was on it. You were preaching. Yes. When you do something you love, you won't work a day in your life. Something like that. Something like that. Okay. Chelsea have really broken through to be a true success story. <laughs> now we're gonna now we're gonna move on to someone who's broken through barriers at two different theme parks. Woo! Yes, she has. Created. Yes, she has. Someone you all know and love. Yeah. And yeah. Not only tricks the tricks. Yeah. kind words and it's such a privilege to be up here with all these amazing inspiring women telling our stories about how we all pretty much celebrate Halloween 365 days of the year and how it's affected us trust me this is never something I envisioned myself doing I studied to be a teacher I work in the financial industry but somehow I always knew I wanted to be a women's activist of some sort you know I've, how many people can say they've been the first at something and I've been the first twice. You know, it's just mind blowing. You never, you never picture that. But I've always been one to pursue my passions. Six year old me was out there wearing Power Ranger shoes and people would tell me, you can't wear that, those are for boys. I said, I'm gonna wear it because I like it. And so that's pretty much how I lived my life. What you see before you is kind of a final version, you know, of tricks. But behind the scenes, what you don't see is over a decade of scare acting experience and hard work that I've had to put in. I've scared in a maze for five years. Every year I put down slider, stilt walker. Never got it, wasn't my time. On my fifth year, I talked to my manager and said, you know, if you need another slider, I'd love to do it. And he told the head of entertainment and decided to take the chance on me and make me the first paid female slider at Fright Fest. <laughs> I continued to do the hard work that year, and with a made-up mind, I got Scare Actor of the Year. <laughs> After that season, I had to go support the boys that taught me how to slide and go watch the Sliders Unite show at the Queen Mary. Then I heard the announcer announcing different character names, like cilantro, bio. I'm like, hmm, what would they call me? What kind of character would I be? So that was kind of the early days where I started thinking about tricks. But simultaneously, while scare acting, I fell in love with entertainment. And I would perform in non-speaking roles at Six Flags and Universal Studios now. This is important because of Trix's character development of where I found my strength in performing through physical movement. So Trix is just an over-the-top performer. I know this is probably weird for you to hear me speak. No. <laughs> I don't talk. It's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> but this, this is, if not for all of these opportunities in the scare acting, I wouldn't get the opportunity that I have today where I, I, I'm a uh, first female stilt walker of a heavy character at Universal Studios. I'll let you put two of you down. go into Halloween Horror Nights, where um, I got to be one of five women silt walkers out of 30 last year. So, I'm constantly learning and trying to grow, but a big pivotal moment for me was during the pandemic when I had the time and I transitioned into a freelance scare actress, where I had to learn different skills, like negotiating with different haunts, different events, you know, learn how to coordinate the photo shoot, networking, social media, and then 
of even putting my makeup on, where to buy professional makeup, uh, how to apply a prosthetic, all these things. And then eventually I launched my own business where I had to learn how much shirts cost, how much stickers cost. You know, there's so many things when you're an entrepreneur, you have to learn. But eventually, with my art background, I designed all of my merch when I launched it. Some of you are wearing it today. <laughs> I, I drew all that. <laughs> but after, after I launched my merch, I reached out to Halloween Depot and said it was their first event. I said, I'm fairly new, but if you're willing to have me, I'd love to be a part of your event. So when I, I remember coming in, wheeling in my little four foot table with a bed sheet for a tablecloth, selling maybe $50 worth of merch. But it's important to remember those early days because now I get to do an event almost every month and perform and sell my merchandise. Even to last year, where I got to be a part of Midsummer Stream and had the opportunity to vend with Art Sideshow. <laughs> at the Horror Museum where they feature my merchandise. And then to have the opportunity to do my very first panel with Slider Dynamics <laughs> season three. <laughs> and speak on the history of sliding representing Fright Fest and women. today would be pitching this panel to Midsummer Scream. This was just an idea on a plane ride with my sister from Walt Disney World. And I was thinking, you know, there hasn't really been any panels highlighting women. And then I'm so thankful that Midsummer Scream, you know, took this idea, let, me, let us have this opportunity for each of us to highlight our stories and to op hopefully open the doors so that more panels can happen. inspires you to, con to go after your passions and remember that you, if whatever you set your mind to, if you're willing to put in the hard work, you can do it. Thank you. I know I definitely don't speak for myself when I say I thoroughly enjoyed hearing that. Yeah. Woo! Move on to the discussion questions. What are some obstacles you faced and how did you overcome them? Trix, I'm gonna to go to you. Well, I feel like I had to constantly prove myself in the field. As you heard in my story, it took me a longer time when the track record to become a slider or walk around. Granted, you need to build your experience as well, but the track record of if you see in an audition, you see me, physically fit woman, you see a guy physically fit, same fitness level, no scare acting experience. The track record, they have hired you know, these guys to teach them how to slide and not really give the opportunity to, because they never had a woman before. So I feel like I've had to prove myself and put in those years and the way I overcame it was that I knew my end goal, what I wanted to persevere. Because I think the biggest thing is everyone gets discouraged, but if you keep going, you can find your end goal. Another thing that's not really an obstacle, but something that I personally think about in, in many roles that I've done where there's very fewer females or none, that I have to think about the decisions that I make for other women. And it's not to say like, you're trying to get out of doing something. If you're thinking about safety, it's important. But because you're the first at something, you need to, as women, you're thinking about making sure that there's no question that women can't do this, so that there's more women to follow. Um, and then another thing is, the biggest assumption when I first started coming out in the community is that people assume that I'm a guy. I'm, I'm sure it's happened to maybe you guys when you first saw me. It, because there's a male-dominated field of stilt walking, you know, you just think it's a guy. You look at how I'm dressed, I'm not dressed in the typical, you know, like, showing more skin, which is okay too, but you know, this is the opposite of what you normally see. You see more victim roles, you know, the sexy clown or like a possession type doll characters. But I created tricks to have for the new generation so that there's a strong female slasher, you know? When you think of slashers, you just think of like Michael Myers, you know, Freddy Krueger, where, where are the women that you think of? So I'm trying to break that stereotype. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Trix, 
Yes, you're definitely right. I definitely feel like there is this common theme that women are not scary as haunters. And I think I'm gonna go to pasta. Can you elaborate on that one? Uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so uh, to tag on to that, friend, it's really interesting because you always have that mentality to where people are like, oh, women are always going to be victims. Women are always going to be lesser than. It's not the right word, but it's where we're going. But they're always portrayed in that light, and that is incorrect because, yes, if you look at like a swim fan or you look at something, women are just as scary as men and ask anybody who's married. <laughs> I'm just saying, quite literally, is the whole thing happening. And I feel like within the horror industry as a whole, um, you don't need to be showing skin to have value. Like, I could be in a straight jacket and I guarantee I will scare you just as much as the next person. So especially in this community is something that we're slowly, all of us are changing that trope. And uh, like for me personally, like when I'm sitting on a panel and we're having discussions about women's role, not scary friends, Icon is the Green Witch. feminine icon and that is super important within the community. The whole story started, we're looking at knots in general, it's a witch. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> like, I mean, you can't really argue more than that. And like, even at um, Dark Harbor when it was still a thing, their ringmaster was feminine presenting. Woo! Whether it was Woo! a, I don't know who, I don't know who the car was, so I don't know. Peggy? Peggy? Yes. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know who it was. But yes, it was a feminine. So we have those <clears> archetypes <throat> that we're, we're not fighting against it. Like, let's dive into it. Let's dive in. Woo! Mary, Miss Mary Imagination, is there anything you can add to this? Oh, boy. <laughs> what, how long do I have? <laughs> but no. Uh, but no, uh, everything that Trix and Pasta said, absolutely on point. Everything they've said, like, I've had to go through the same thing too. Like, oh my goodness, the things I've heard come out of men's mouths. Like, you won't make it far unless you, like, in the horror community or industry, unless you're sexy and you're not sexy. It's like, okay. And then so, <laughs> you're not scary. You're energetic enough you're not this you're not that you're not this you're not that and it's like you know what okay just keep, like what trick said keep persevering keep pushing through if a door well a, there's this amazing woman in this industry named Kimber Parrish and she is such a big inspiration to me and whenever like these doors would close she would say there was there will always be a better opportunity down the road a better door that will open it's just that is just those closed doors is just paving a way for something better along down the road. And she was absolutely right. When certain doors closed, uh, something way better came up way down the road. And you know what? In every role I've, put, um, I've played in the haunt industry, on Elevator, on wh whatever I'm doing, you know? And it doesn't matter what kind of role. I Even as a victim, I always played it aggressively. Like, if I'm going to... If I'm like screaming to death, I'm gonna scream to death in your face and flail and try to help me, you know, help me. Um, so yeah, just keep pushing, keep moving forward. Don't give up. There's always something better down the road, and you know, you got this. Woo! like to hear from the business side of things. Are there any yes. obstacles that you can kind of let us know about? Everything. <laughs> Everything. It, I say like pursue your dreams, but like with caution because it is so hard. We literally, every obstacle that was thrown at us from learning how to do your taxes and yeah. like trademark your name and just paperwork stuff and YouTube, look everything up, take your time to do it, and it, every single thing that comes with running a business, you 
we literally did not know how to do anything, like from the beginning. Mm. And this goes back to doing with, um, when you do something that you love and you enjoy, it doesn't feel like work because you're working 24 seven on just trying to figure this one thing out. It's, it's gonna be tiring, but you still wanna do it because you like what you do. So I can't think of any examples right now, but everything pretty much. <laughs> so again, do what you love and you won't work a day in your life. Yes. <laughs> All right, now, before we move on to a little q and I'm going to ask each panelist a question. What message or advice would you, like to sh would you like to share with the people that joined us today? We'll start with Mary. Hi. <laughs> what piece of advice? Well, exactly what I said during the, during the last question. It's, it's yeah, it, if you love something, keep learning about it. Keep, it never stop learning. I'm always constantly learning. I don't know everything about haunting or filmmaking. I'm no expert. Um, always reach out. If you need help, reach out for help. Like, hey, bring people in and let's work together. Bring something scary to life together. Because, you know, a film, a haunt, it's not made by one person. It's a whole team of talented people coming together. And that's amazing. Everyone in this community is so wonderful <coughs> in their own way and so talented. And when we all come together, that's just amazing. And you know what? Just keep pushing and keep fighting. And Woo! Keep creating. Keep creating! Yeah. Okay. So my advice would just be to do something that scares you. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be scared because when you do something that's scary and you overcome it, it's the best feeling in the world and you just feel alive. So go start a business, go do that thing that you were like nervous about, like who cares? Like life is so short, like just go do it. <laughs> so this goes to anybody, take up space. And I think that's super important, regardless of who you are, what you identify as, like take up space. Make sure that you are heard in the room. I think everybody as a person deserves that. Take up the space. That's really what ultimately my goal is to let anybody is, is to, yeah, no, be present. And I, that's all I gotta say is, as somebody who's been in the community for a long time, like, it's okay to take up space. Even if you're um, not welcome in the room, pull up your own chair. just hitting the nail in the wall, but if there's something <laughs> that you want to pursue, don't be afraid to go after it with full force. It will make you so happy because each one of us are doing exactly, exactly what we love and we're not even working. Another thing too I just want to say is that we should all support each other. There's more than enough room in the haunt community, in any community, for all of us to exist and do our thing and shine and respect each other. Yeah. Yep. That's my advice. Yeah. So, said, definitely ask for help. If someone is doing something that you want to do, just go ask them. Like, because especially in the Hong community, speaking for the Hong community, when we did our first pop up at Halloween Depot, we were so scared to set up there because as soon as we walked in, everyone was already friends and we were so nervous. What I did was I went to every single vendor, I got their cards, I got to meet them, and I'm still friends with them till this day, and that's how I met you. Yep. And I asked you how, where'd you get your banner from? I need to get one. Yes, yes. <laughs> so ask questions, don't be shy. Like, people are willing to help. Yes. <laughs> you get us more, you get us more. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna piggyback on that, because in the theme, the theme of entertainment, like whether it's a business or, Ask the questions to the people, make the connections, because those are super important. If you are somebody in the room and you're like, hey, I wanna be where you are, I wanna know what you did to get there, ask the, ask the questions, reach out, it's okay. Whether it's on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Outlook, however you do, ask those questions, those are super important because some of the people, some of the connections I've made in my professional career was, came from asking the question. And if you never ask, hey, who, how, why, you'll never get an answer. Um, he would, 
I mean, if you never ask the question, the answer is always going to be no. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now we're going to open it up for a little Q and A. Anyone mm -hmm. have any questions for the ladies on? You over there? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, hi, I'm Jack. Very hi. Hey Jack. Go ahead and stand up. Oh, okay. Hello. Woo. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you already have an Instagram probably? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Make your Instagram, do a website, start shipping, and start um, going to different events to start vending, because you will get your name out there we start vending with people. So, yeah. Jax is so talented. She made those, these awesome dolls with me and Tim. I'm like, oh my have God. Have you ever done an event ah! before? You need to get into Midsummer Scream next year. You need to yes. email them. Just get into, go, I'm pretty sure you go to a lot of spooky events. Talk to the person that put it together and say, can I pop up a little booth? And don't be so fixated on having the most perfect booth because we all start somewhere. Get a table, put a cloth, and get your name out there because it, you will sell all your stuff. And go big, so. <laughs> Yeah. 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 That works. That's what I do. <laughs> Any other questions? I saw Leatherface ask one. <laughs> um, I know the industry is constantly moving. There's always needs and, and focuses. As of right now, what would you say is like probably one of the most important glass ceilings to really just smash through in terms of, you know, just what you're seeing now? Damn Leatherface. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, accessibility. Uh, one of the big things is accessibility to everybody, whether if you have some sort of handicap or not a handicap, is to make sure that everybody gets to enjoy the product the same. So whatever our mes message is, whether the heart of it is so everybody can enjoy it the same. It's really, that's something that um, as an industry as a whole, we're all trying to get whether it's a mobility handicap, whatever it is, but we want everybody to be able to enjoy, especially in horror, we want everybody to get scared. nervous. Um, as you guys know, Universal is kind of notorious for their chainsaw guys, is what we, a lot of people say. Um, it was so male dominated. I feel like um, there was almost a boys club mentality. Granted, I was welcomed in, but I was very, not hesitant, but I was insecure. I was scared. I was, I was wondering if these guys were going to judge me on how I whipped around this chainsaw, but it turned out that I whipped it around pretty dang well. <laughs> Um, I would say that that's something for anyone, if you don't see someone that you like identify with and that's like, you know, for women, if there's a field, you don't see another woman. I think a lot of women feel intimidated because I've had them let me know like for sliding. They kind of get shy or, or nervous, you know, wanting to slide with the other guys that know, look like pros, but everybody starts somewhere. And majority of people are very welcoming to say like, hey, I need help. Like, and still walking, sliding, makeup, anything, like, ask me. I'm not the perfect person, you know, to know, but I'm still learning, and I'll learn with you. You just ask and be willing to, to get out of your comfort zone, because you're going to see everybody going, and you're going to be like, 
should I go? Should I not? Mm -hmm. You're wasting your time if you don't go. It's you always gotta go. take that chance. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Like, always go. go. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Uh, woo! 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 Wow. Great. And uh, they're like, you're going to scare people. Uh -huh. With oh, wow. what? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, it's terrifying. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, so, so, so the more of us that are terrifying, the better. Okay, you whipped it around great. Let's look around. Uh, Let's look around. I see a question back there. Um, it's not a question. It's just a compliment to all you ladies up there. I just want to say that us LGBT people are so happy that we have like women representing the horror community. And in a world that, that's constantly like dragging us down, for once, it's like, I feel so powerful, you know? I get chains around people, scare them, scare whole rooms and bring them down to the ground, have grown men go, <laughs> like crawling at them. And also, the second, the big, other big thing, actually, this is number one, my favorite part, is getting the opportunity to work alongside so many amazing people in this community and, you know, creating a family with them. Hot family! Yeah. And, you know, creating short films with Creating stuff with people. It's wonderful. Yay. All right, you want to go? Yeah, I, I, well, I got it now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's, it's a long time. Pick one thing, but with all the scaring, experience that I have. I think when I get to be tricks with with all of you, it's probably my favorite because I get to interact more with people than I do when scaring. I can scare you, I can I can talk with you. I mean you understand me without me talking, but make I us think laugh. It's, it's a chance that I get to actually make an impact and try to do more for more than myself. I think that's my favorite part. This is hard. It shouldn't be hard, but it's so hard because the whole process is fun, except the baking, the long hours, the, you know, all that stuff. But I think when we come up with the new desserts, that Chelsea is a creative person. She was like destined to do something like this. If you guys know her, she can paint. She's, she's one of those that can do anything. And I always tell her, oh, you can do that, huh? Like, of course you can. But when she comes up with a new dessert, and we post it and we get you guys' reaction when we do a pop-up and you guys tell us how much you guys love our treats. Like that part just makes it all worth it, so. so to be super sentimental, uh, when I, honestly at the end of the day, is I hope if somebody out there sees me and can be like, hey, I relate to that person, I relate to them, whether it is a body type, uh, whatever. I'm an alternative female who works in a corporate male-dominated field. And so the fact that they can be like, hey, I relate to you, that is what is inspiring to me. And that's what makes it worth it. Is that, uh, through my hardship and through my fighting through all of the doors and all of the and like kicking down boundaries, it's, it's super important because 
you know, yeah. So that's what is important to me. And so if somebody at the end of the day comes up to me and was like, hey, let's have a conversation, I would love to have that conversation. And because I just want to inspire that younger me. Woo! Woo! <laughs> My favorite part of the journey, honestly, has been the group of people that I've called chosen family. Um, I met so many incredible people, people that I know are gonna be with me until, until I'm old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, the people, the friends that I've met have been incredible, love you too. Um, it's just so genuine and supportive and that's literally the best part about this community. you do your thing. I just want to know at the end of the day, that's hard and you've had a lot of issues that you have to deal with. What is your self-care routine like? Can I answer that real quick? I can answer that real quick. We literally put our phones on Do Not Disturb yes. and we just stay home, watch movies, binge Netflix, order food in. We like to go to the gym, work out, and counter macros, blah, blah, blah. But after a crazy weekend, that whole week, we just binge and do nothing. That's like the best thing. Uh, when it comes to like self-care is, uh, I, <laughs> my partners are definitely notorious for knowing I get the 20 minute I can vent. After that, we don't talk about it anymore. So when it comes to work, work doesn't leave past that point. And if it's going past the 20 minutes, then it's a conversation like, hey, why are you still affected by this? It's been 45 minutes, why are we still talking about, <laughs> uh, about your workplace? You, you were already there for eight hours, why are we still having conversations? So I think a lot of it is setting up boundaries, but also a lot of it is doing things that we like to do. like or things that I like to do when I'm home. Like whether it is, am I doodling on my iPad? Am I listening to a new novel? I'm a notorious like podcaster. So I listen to podcasts all the time. So like if I have my, am I cooking and putting podcasts in? So that is super important. You create those boundaries, especially when it comes to a stressful work environment. Like this is work, this is life. And they are very different. And you just have to make sure that you have when it ends and stop. It's not like, on a Saturday morning, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my god, hey, i got to respond to that email. Smack me. We're not, <laughs> we're not responding to the email. We are making sure that we are enjoying the time that we're enjoying. Well, I think my uh, biggest self-care is when I'm finally putting the conditioner in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I shower, don't worry. I put two shower caps on my shower. <laughs> but at the end of the weekend, I put a bunch of conditioner and I let it soak and just kind of relaxing. And then I'm in the shower and I'm like, all right, I finally got it out. And I look forward to something, something my favorite to eat or drink. And then sometimes I like to go to Disneyland, just like. <laughs> For self care, one of the biggest, like the number one activity I like to do is read. I love reading so much, and I read a lot. It's it's so comforting and so relaxing. I just focus on the story, and I go, ah, that's yeah, that's it. Aww. Mine is just like Pasta said, I like to keep work, work, and home life, home life. I like to focus on self-love and my health, wellness, longevity in physicality and mentality. Mm -hmm. Woo! Now, I think it's about time to wrap up. What? What? Please let her make a statement. Please do. Yes, we, yes, oh. Mr. Dynamix. Uh, do you need to say something? Don't worry. Yeah. I, see. I just want to say there's been so many impactful female and the females in the haunt industry for so long. So for Midsummer to jump on board with this and really expose these uh, females, this is only scratching the surface. Surface, I give them props for that because they're ahead of the curve. <laughs> on some level, and they're up here for a reason. Yeah. Especially Pasta, I have watched you. <laughs> Thank you.
16 years old to where she's at now. Oh. Oh. In other words, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, only take one thing from this entire panel, which would be perseverance. Don't give up on what you want to do, especially in this industry, because it's a hard industry. You think you have it hard, think about what you put in front of you. It's <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> Perseverance. Take up space. Take up space. Persistence. Persistence. Thank Persistence. you for coming to our panel. <laughs>